Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Let's do the water element. Wet liquid it is. <laughs> Fluidity for the Welsh. The strongest of all, some do believe, as it can reshape and move through things but does not destroy it nor does it change it but yet it can also destroy within minutes, seconds even. Now in Nordic beliefs, Dwarf Vestri ruled the water. The Celtic wind castle was grey. Mayan believed it was the black bacab. The some not all, some ancient Mexican cultures, it was yellow and earth. The Native American, in some not all, black and a bear, and I think it was Muskius, uh, the ruler, but it does vary from one place to the next. Archangel Raphael, in Kabbalistic and Hebrew, ruled the water, and also the Hebrews had. Akor, akoro, meaning behind, um, but there was also the Enochian, I think, was Archangel Raphael too, or maybe something else. Let me just have a look. No, it was the Archangel, I just googled it. Um, anyway, but their castle was green. I knew something was a little different. Um, the Chinese said it was, to them, autumn and white. Obviously, it's liquid matter. It's the nourisher. You know, it's our emotions. It's compassion and anything to do with intuition and purifying. There's so much involved with water. So there have many um, different beings in this category. Now, there's also the fact that Archangel Gabriel is used for water, um, other than obviously the Enochian and Hebrew, they use a different one, um, but Archangel Gabriel, and I'm not sure if that even is of today, that's more past, so I don't know if it's still the same. We have the nymphs, we have, some people say the undines, and some people say the undines, um, and they are the fey folk that tend water plants, so yeah, we have the merfolk. Now, the Scots and Irish use grey. We tend to use blue. Nixa. Nixa is the ruler. Or Nixie. The Nixie or Nixa. <laughs> um, sunset and autumn is the best time. This is more an astral plane. Obviously, it's cold and it's moist. It's usually represented by cups in the tarot for emotion and love. The power animals that you can use in the daytime for doing spell work is whale, dolphin and the salmon. If you are doing it at the dock, it is a tiger shark, a boar, a squid and a killer whale. <laughs> so, there's obviously water in many places. We'll look at lakes, rivers, but also in mists, in fogs. Um, it's believed that the apostut was used a silver crescent to represent water. The water signs are Cancer, Scorpio and Pisces. On a positive, they are compassionate. They bring peace, quite nurturing. They are loving and they do forgive. They're very forgiving. On a negative, they lack emotional control. They can be a little lazy and unstable, but that's because of their emotions, obviously. So to represent water, the chalice, water itself, mirrors for divination, it would be the mirror, because they can help with change, with plants, with intuitions, any emotions, uh, stabilising your emotions, stabilising your chemical balance, divination, marriage, dreams, growth, connecting to spirits, sexual emotions, um, healing, psychic growth, like these, this, the water's just, it runs throughout, which is what I'm trying to say, is it runs throughout, so therefore it helps with a lot of things that, you know, you can work with it so much. And now the ruler, Nix, Nixa, or the Nixie, is said to be a feminine fae. 
they the elementals and stuff they tend to work very strong with the earth because water and the earth obviously they kind of bind with each other now the nymphs and the undines or undines can be found in more smaller areas of water smaller bodies of water waterfalls and ponds and pools things like that even lakes if they're not huge the merfolk <laughs> they do they are quite well you'd say they were relatives of the merfolk i suppose and they're found in oceans though where the water fair they tend to go to wetlands so there's some there's a different being for the various areas but you can work with any of those if you choose to they will help with you being over sensitive um they will help calm your emotions and how to teach you how to be better at your emotions so to speak and they can help with mental growth they are quite sensitive beings bear in mind they are the water but they are quite persistent too so the bunyips these are only in australia the bunyips and they live in marshes and swamps, um, mangrove swamp, they roar, um, pretty loud and can be heard all through the swamp, reaching towns and cities, so it was believed. Their feet are backwards for some reason, but nobody actually knows why, I'm sure there'll be something if you research. They do tend to hibernate when there's no rain, so you know in the dry seasons, they tend to go underground in deep mud because they don't like the dry seasons. You can work with these for rain magic, if you choose. The Japanese have the kappa, and it lives in ponds and lakes. This is a very odd looking being. It's almost a child, it's like a toddler size, like two or three, maybe even up to five size wise. Um, if you imagine a child at that size, that's what you'd be looking at, a kappa, but it is, um, Okay, it's like a, a monkey without the, but it has a tortoise shell. And it also has this weird indentation in its head where it keeps water. Because in order for it to be on land, it has to have water within it. And it keeps water in this indentation in its head. But it's definitely like green type skin colour. Um, it has webbed hands and webbed toes but it stinks of rotting fish, apparently. Not nice. It can actually appear wherever there is water stored and move through the land. It's said to drag its victims in the water and it eats them, but it eats them from the inside out. You can trick one. Um, <laughs> and if you can trick one to work with you, they teach you the magic of bone setting, but they are very dangerous. They will not think twice about eating you. So I'd advise you not to. Then we have the Lake Maidens, a relative of the Mer people. And they are Grokethanon, um, Grokethnanun in Welsh, which means Lake Maidens. They are very beautiful. And they will actually come on land and they will marry humans. They don't tend to stay though, they do tend to leave. Um, and if you research, I do believe that you'll find there is a story of this actually happening in Wales. It's the 12th century story of the Lake Maiden and how she married him and came on earth and why she left. It's an interesting story. They help with healing magic. They help with giving you the knowledge of medicine in regards to natural herbal medicine and things that are available um, in the area. Then we have the Lorelei. The Lorelei is actually a German mermaid. The Rhine Maiden is also called. It's Lorelei, the Rhine Maiden, but the German mermaid. She has a fish tail and she's the one that sits on the rocks in the rivers and she will sing beautiful songs, luring the fishermen to their deaths. They tend to guard ancient treasure and ancient knowledge and power. You can work with them for this um, and gain their secrets. Just respect and be kind. So the merfolk, <laughs> the mermen and the merwomen, they do not have dorsal fins. 
but they do have webbed fingers and they do have webbed toes but they can take off their tails and they can go on shore to have two legs as well. Their beauty is more of the inside. Um, people tend to have an attraction to them with no reason why. It's more like an ethereal emotional beauty I guess. They do have underwater homes and they do speak a multitude of languages. But they do have their own too. <laughs> they do have very strong supernatural powers and they're amazing at being prophets. It's said that mer people and humans, if they have offspring, they will have webbed toes or webbed fingers, both or one or the other. They don't generally settle with a human lover, though they will take a human lover. <laughs> But they can help with anything that is to do with being bilingual, um, anything to do with emotions and beauty within. So then we have the blue men. These are more folk, the same, but they are Scotland. But these are more negative. They will attack ships and they don't like humans at all. If you speak to them in rhyme, it tends to confuse these, which is odd because usually these beings do like rhyme, but they have to actually stand there and work it out. And by the time they've worked it out, usually the fishermen have rode the boat and got away. But if get, if you get too close, they will take that ship down any means necessary and devour. You can still work with them for magic if you choose to. Um, they will help with um, psychic abilities, um, protection, travel, inspiration... And I think developing your divin uh, yeah, divination skills through water scrying and such. It's a raining really bad. Nuggers. Nuggers of India. Half human, half serpent. Connected with both water and land. Anagini. Female. Some are not so friendly. But they are very beautiful because they're very colourful. They have great power over water. They can cause or prevent chaos regarding water. They do tend to have a lot of wealth, very rich, um, and do have many ancient artefacts hidden. The Nugakunya, the goddess of the three realms, is worshipped in India, a lower body being a cobra and the upper body a human because she brings extreme spiritual knowledge if you work with her in magic the Nugakunya three realms goddess so then we have the Nereids now these are the Greeks water elementals they are the granddaughters of Pontus the sea god and of Gaia mother earth they are the daughters of those they're similar to mermaids but they do not have a fish tail they are vain about their appearance but they are very beautiful extremely beautiful and they play with dolphins they will ride them they surround the sea chariot when it is riding they will surround it and go along with it they can bring about happiness beauty they can balance your emotions or balance in general and help with glamour spells the nine daughters goddess Ron so this is Nordic and it's the wife of the Agdea, captured souls at sea, was the favourite to do with this uh, goddess. Very unfriendly, extremely temperamental, has a bad temperament. Uh, so do her daughters, she has daughters with her too. The daughters will dance on the storms and on the waves. Their mother will create the storms and the waves and they will aid in the, sh the sinking of ships and they tend to collect, well, the goddess will... Um, she will collect the souls using a very large net and they're quite malicious and they're not to be worked with on human terms. They're okay with their own kind but they don't trust us humans, they'd rather kill us. Then we have the nymphs, <laughs> Greek, water and tree nymphs. It's really important to remember that there's different kind of nymphs. Um, they're also known as the uh, Kranai and Peggy. Now, they rule springs, so they rule various different parts too. There's quite a lot of nymphs, and they're all segmented in particular areas. The limnots, 
control stagnant waters that do not move. What I mean by that is they flow nicely, they don't change, they're just a steady flow. Then we have the Oryats. They generally found in grottos and mountains out of the way. Then we have the Dryads, which will guard the forest in general. Then we have the Hummerdryads, which will pick a particular tree. Then we have the Naiads, and they are land. So there's many, many nymphs there everywhere. And you can work with these um, for prophecy, uh, gardening knowledge, herbal knowledge, medicine, but natural medicine, obviously, inspiration, healing, and you can bring them to your garden in general. Now, then we have the sea lion, and it's not what you think. It is not the actual sea lion. Um, <laughs> so... It's an interesting being because it's actually part lion. It does have a mane and it has pads at the front. So the front, it's got the lion's paws and the pads and it has a lion's mane. But it has a silvery seal tail. And it has at the back webbed and clawed seal little limbs. <laughs> it roars extremely loud, like you'll hear it roaring through the water. It's really dangerous, it, it's very vicious, and it likes to play mind games. So it can be good at protecting if you can work with it, but it prefers to eat people rather than um, play. So yeah, <laughs> the Selkies, other seal folk, they dance at night and are said to only come out at night. They have amazing underwater lands that are covered by a huge air bubble because some believe that they put on seal skin to go from one place to another but they can also be humans they will seek revenge by sinking boats or creating storms towards anybody that dares to hunt down seals this does depend on the area though in which the mythological creature is now the selkies are often known for going and marrying humans or if you find the skin the seal skin then you can keep the selkie from returning to the waters etc there's many stories of the selkies but in that respect they can be worked with to raise storms um, and in some areas they're actually very beautiful so it just depends the tritons greek race of mermen mediterranean is uh, originally it still is i think yeah so they are obviously part human at the top and then they have this three-pointed tail from the waist down, like a, a mer tail, of course. They are quite sharp. Uh, they have quite sharp claws. They're not as pretty as the other kind, but they have this deep bluey green air or deep blue or deep green. They have fish scales on their actual human part of the skin and they're silvery. But they can also remove their tails and walk on land. Definitely do not work with them. They are not, not ones to work with, not recommended at all. So the Undines Undines, <laughs> the word Latin Unda, meaning wave, smallest amount of water, but not oceans. Now, they are very small. They do have scales though and they're still webbed, they're still webbed. They can be human size as well. They can look like humans. They have enchanting voices. They will adapt their looks and mold them to their surroundings so that they can blend in. They do love to lead people astray, just like the pixies. They have fun with that. Some have fishtails, some do not yet. They will have webbed toes and fingers that are always apparent, regardless if they have a fishtail or feet and legs. They are very good at controlling emotions. They will help you overcome of these emotions that become overbearing. They will help you get over that. Or any emotions that are stagnated and do not move and need to disperse. I think it goes back to a Mayan belief, if I'm correct, as well. Water fairies, they are the smallest of the small folk. <laughs> and it's just... Yeah, they tend water and plants, and it's literally just one, one of the branches of the fairies. Um, unfortunately, the young, when they are born, they cannot actually leave the water until they mature, as they only have a fishtail. So, 
tiny, they're like tiny, tiny humans, but you can tell that they're not. And they will go up and down waterfalls. They will ride on dragonflies as well. It's believed. You can use them for magic healing, though, and for your plants. They're very good at that. And they enjoy it, too. The problem with the water fae is the trust, yet again. They are highly unlikely to work with humans as a rule. It takes time and effort and practice. It is one of those things where they do not trust us. So we must learn them that we can be trusted as people. And even though they can see that they've had people where they've seen them be nice, seen them be trusted, and then all of a sudden turned on them, you've got to remember that humans have such a dim mind that they can turn in a matter of seconds for the sake of greed or anything really it's one of those things isn't it it's we're born to be that way unfortunately <laughs> anyway that was the um the water element and beings etc thank you for listening many many blessings <laughs>